Uh, hello, I'm Lucas, and welcome to an introduction to BPF. So today we are going to talk about what is BPF, uh, how to compile uh, a program with it, uh, how this program would communicate with user space applications, uh, what are limitations of BPF and where it's being used. At the end, we are also uh, to have some examples of BPF code uh, and we will go through them. So what's BPF? Uh, BPF, uh, which stands for Berkeley Packet Filter, was introduced in uh, FreeBSD. Uh, main reason for, for it was to increase performance of, uh, of network packets handling. Previous solutions were all user space and with uh, increase of the traffic, uh, it was not enough. Uh, it was also introduced in Linux kernel in uh, 2.1, so also in the in the 90s. But right now, this uh, uh, this original VPF uh, uh, is considered uh, obsolete since it was replaced with a newer, improved version, and all of the materials uh, uh, are now uh, referencing original VPF as CVPF, which stands for Classic VPF. And the newer improved version is uh, called extended VPF and usually just called VPF right now. Uh, it's present in Linux kernel since uh, 3.15, so for, for eight years right now. And uh, one of the differences uh, is that it uh, supports optional run of the, um, of the BPF program in uh, kernel virtual machine. It uses just-in-time uh, compiler, so uh, the program is uh, uh, translated to machine code from bytecode, and uh, which improves performance. It's disabled by default, but can, can be enabled. And uh, otherwise, code is just uh, being uh, interpreted. And uh, BPF is under constant development, de de development and uh, there is a lot of new features coming in with uh, newer kernel re releases. Especially recently, it's, uh, it's, it's become very popular. Um, so there are new features coming and there is a link uh, to, um, to a website where uh, we can check which features were introduced when, uh, but BPF as itself is backwards compatible. So uh, if uh, our program is using only old features, it can be run with older uh, kernels as well. There are also other implementations of um, interpreters of, of uh, BPF. One of the most popular is uh, UBPF. It's, it's user space, it's written in C, but uh, the, uh, the same as uh, the one in Linux kernel. The difference is in the license. Uh, since um, a kernel version of the interpreter is uh, released under GPL, uh, all the programs uh, that are using some features from inside of the kernel needs to be released under GPL as well. It can be a limitation for uh, for, uh, for someone since uh, GPL is not always uh, welcome. That's why there is also UBPF and other implementations running in the user space. It's not as fast as the kernel virtual machine, but uh, it's out there. Uh, there is also RBPF and GoBPF, which basically are uh, very similar versions, but uh, written in Rust and Go. Uh, what's also worth to mention, uh, UBPF was a base for Microsoft to implement uh, BPF in Windows. Uh, I, I don't know much about uh, where it's being used, but uh, uh, from what I read, uh, it was mostly because of uh, containers being more and more popular and there is some networking handling uh, around containers done with BPF. 
Um, so our uh, BPF program can be triggered by a kernel hook. Mm, basically, three triggers are possible. One is network packets appearing on the interface. The other one is uh, event in the file system and also call of the system function. Mm, there is also uh, uh, XDP, which stands for Express Data Path. It's very similar to BPF, but even lower level. So uh, XDP is being run before socket buffer uh, assignment. So we, uh, with use of DMA, direct memory access, we are uh, working with the memory on the network card itself before the packet is copied to the, uh, to the OS. But uh, XDP is, uh, even, has even more limitations than BPF and also requires full support from uh, network card firmware and the kernel driver. Um, that's the path, uh, how we go from the source code to the um, running uh, program in the kernel virtual machine. So um, uh, we compile, uh, like in this example, we use C. Um, it's it's, it's uh, probably the most popular way to write BPF uh, programs. It can be also written in uh, Rust, in Go, and uh, P4, uh, and probably others. But the most popular one is C. It can be compiled with a compiler that supports uh, BPF target. Uh, CLANG was uh, one of the first uh, that supported that since 2014, I think. Uh, GNU uh, uh, GCC also supports it since 2019, but mostly online resources refer to CLANG as the go-to compiler. And we get a bytecode that's then loaded to kernel virtual machine. And uh, kernel virtual machine, the, the, the one that, that's uh, implemented in the, in the Linux kernel is written in C obviously, but uh, there is no relation between uh, source code of our BPF program and um, uh, and uh, what kind of interpreter we we are running. So we can compile Rust code and run it in the Linux kernel virtual machine. Um, yes, so our BPF program is loaded into kernel uh, where uh, it can also communicate with our user space uh, software. So for that reason, there is a virtual file system created, which is BPFFS, uh, and uh, it provides our uh, several data, data types that we can connect uh, with our user space uh, program. Those data types are called maps. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, it was very limited list. Uh, it was a hash map. Um, um, uh, vector, I think, and something else. But right now there is way more of that. Uh, newer version of kernel support uh, new types. Uh, there are uh, several uh, limitations. So there can, there can only be 64 maps per uh, BPF program. Uh, the size of the, of the map doesn't matter, but uh, maximum 64 maps per BPF program and a uh, user space application that loads BPF program ha can have more and can load multiple um, BPF programs to the kernel. And uh, some of the maps can be shared between uh, BPF programs, but uh, the maximum for a single one is, uh, is 64. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, Linux kernel ships with a library called libbpf. And uh, it's, uh, it provides um, uh, support for loading, unloading, and uh, map management uh, in, in user space uh, for, the, for the BPF programs. Uh, it's uh, being shipped in uh, tools directory of Linux kernel sources, but also there is a GitHub repo for convenience Sometimes we may want to build it from source, but usually these days, most of the modern Linux distributions 
have uh, libbpf already in the package managers. Uh, libbpf uh, allows us to manage the, the, the map and VPF programs and also load uh, compiled programs to the kernel. <clears throat> and the uh, BPF program itself uh, has some limitations. So it's uh, C code or some other code, but uh, it's not like regular pro program. So uh, due to the safety introduced uh, in the kernel, uh, we are limited with what the program can, can do and can use. So for example, there are no loops allowed and since kernel 5.8 there is uh, there is uh, optional way to iterate but up to 32 times and there is no way to hack it in some way to allow more iterations or um, or to end up in infinite loop because the during uh, load of the program to the kernel it's being checked if it's uh, 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 if it's safe and only 32 iterations are allowed, it basically um, the for loop is uh, is uh, unfolded to 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 like like inline functions uh, run several times. It's it's not regular loop. Uh, only inline functions are allowed. So by the same definition, uh, we cannot use most of external libraries. Uh, the the exception would be header only library with inline functions which are basically copied to our source code so there are some helpers and also there are uh, some headers in the linux kernel with with functions that are useful when writing uh, vpf programs but no uh, no other functions than inline uh, can be used there are also no uh, const arrays or uh, strings and no global variables. One way to avoid uh, this limitation of global variables is to just use a map from user space that would be used like a global variable. Uh, but uh, the, <coughs> the global uh, variable itself is not available. Um, also, uh, there are some projects aiming to replace uh, NetFilter with uh, BPF. NetFilter is basically a kernel module or a, a set of kernel modules to handle network traffic. Uh, it's very popular, have been around for years. Everyone knows how to use it. There, were, there are some other tools other than IP tables to, to configure NetFilter. But uh, I think IP tables is still the most popular. And uh, NetFilter is not as efficient as a BPF equivalent would be. So there are two the most popular pro projects aiming to, to introduce BPF into built-in uh, kernel network management, uh, network traffic management, let's say. Um, so one of them is uh, BP filter, which is uh, basically a um, kernel module that is being managed with uh, syntax the same as the one of IP tables. So uh, it would be easy transition from one to another. Um, and there are BPF programs uh, that are part of the project that implement uh, uh, functionality of, of, of NetFilter. And the other one is uh, Leap uh, Kefir, uh, which is um, basically a library that converts uh, IP tables rules into BPF programs and allows to load them to the kernel. So it may take some, my, uh, some time, but BPF is, uh, is, uh, is aiming to replace NetFilter. Don't know if that's going to happen because uh, IP tables is, is, uh, have been around forever and uh, is being widely used. But due to that fact, uh, probably IP tables syntax is still considered as a, as a way to configure those two projects. Um, also, uh, some other big companies around uh, are, have a huge interest in, uh, in, in BPF, like Google, Facebook, Cloudflare, Netflix. Uh, 
there is a lot of materials and uh, a lot of uh, uh, commits coming from example from Google to, to BPF so they are definitely interested with it. Um, Cloudflare is using uh, BPF to do some DDS, D, uh, DDoS mitigation. Um, Facebook is doing load balancing, uh, Netlinks some statistics. Uh, so there is a lot of interest uh, in BPF. That's why it's uh, it's being uh, uh, in constant development and evolves so fast recently. Uh, okay, so that would be it. Let's go to the um, to the examples. I prepared several examples to show how uh, BPF uh, programs are written. Um, so for that uh, purpose, there is a make file. I won't explain it all, but basically we get uh, um, we extract uh, VM Linux from 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 running system to get uh, the header. Um, we use Silang to compile our uh, BPF program and uh, generate a skeleton header out of it and then compile our user space uh, C program that loads our program uh, uh, that loads our BPF application to the kernel. <clears throat> so let's start maybe with uh, user space application. Not going to details, we first we need to allocate uh, memory for, for our BPF. This basically states that we want uh, as much as we can get and in case of an error, we just uh, exit. And then uh, we open our, um, our BPF, load it and attach it to the hook. Then we have uh, infinite loop since uh, at the end of this program uh, our BPF will be detached from the hook in the kernel and uh, unloaded. Um, yeah, about uh, the BPF example. So what we have here is um, as simple example as it, as, it, as it can get. As I said, we need to define license for our uh, BPF uh, program. In this case, it's GPL, uh, and this allows us to use all the GPL code from uh, from the kernel. Um, we as we attach to uh, execve, so to basically any command uh, uh, run will be uh, will be running that 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 uh, handler of ours. Uh, the path here go, states for uh, tracing points, syscalls, uh, and uh, syscall enter, and the name of the syscall. And all that we do, it's just a simple hello world. We print uh, Kodi line to the uh, trace, and uh, okay, let's let's build it. Um, and we need. Uh, super user privileges to run it. Okay, so here we are to um, to view our um, uh, debug information. We need to let's go sudo. Um, we need to go to sys. kernel um, tracing and trace pipe. And what we are getting here is um, um, for every uh, um, syscall out there, we are getting print of Kodi line. Since we, I'm using um, Visual Studio Code in the um, remote mode, there is a lot of uh, commands run by Visual Studio, so we actually don't have to uh, type in our uh, any other commands, but we can do something like ls, and there for a while, um, let's, yep. So here is uh, our um, debug caused by us in, in bash script. All the others are VS code, just uh, doing some stuff in the background. Um, so 
This is the simplest example, but let's uh, extend it a little bit. So it's... Uh, mm, It's very similar, um, very similar program. We what's added? It's uh, we changed our hook to uh, make directory uh, to avoid all that uh, mess from Visual Studio. And what we print is a process ID of uh, uh, of what was uh, um, executing that that syscall. So let's build. And uh, let's go to some temp and make directory A. And what we get is a process ID of uh, a shell that did run that comment. So we can. Uh, we can see actually not the shell, but the uh, make dear um, program. Uh, so there is a way to uh, use some uh, BPF uh, helpers functions uh, provided by kernel to access some additional information. Uh, next example um, shows us that there is a param uh, struct that it's uh, mm, that we can we, that we have access from our handler. So let's uh, switch directory to that um, build and uh, what we do uh, here is we print path name to the um, there is a specific struct for uh, make dear, and we can extract path name. And let's make directory B, and we can see that uh, our handler got information that directory B is being uh, created. There is also other information available in this struct, uh, in, in, this, in this structure, and. Uh, since the, the path name is being offset by 16 bytes, we just um, use two variables here to make sure that we are in correct space. There are other ways to do that, but it's probably the cleanest way. But how to know what's the offset of the path name? So to know that, we should go to um, syskernel debug. Um, tracing events and in here we have uh, um, syscalls and here we have all the syscalls available so if we attach to a, to a hook there are others available for us uh, in our case it's uh, syscall enter make dear and in here we have several files and one of them is format. And as we can see, um, there is uh, information about all the data uh, provided by this syscall in, the, in, in our param. And what we want is path name and it's being offset by uh, 16 bytes. That's why two eight uh, byte variables in here uh, as an offset in that, in that structure. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, since it was uh, the, uh, the simplest example, but in C and we can go simpler with Python. And that's basically exactly the same program that we had at the very beginning in, um, in C. So we just uh, attach to the um, um, to the syscall and print uh, some hello world. In this case, uh, uh, in Python we can uh, uh, we can put this this C code in line. So uh, Python is being used only as a user space uh, site of the BPF in here. 
So with uh, some wrapper on BPF, we can uh, just uh, load the, the code. And this example is very simple. So it's in the same file. We could also obviously load it from, from some other C, uh, from some other .c file and, and edit it in, in a regular way. But we, we don't have to compile it. We don't have to uh, handle anything about loading it. We just, we just uh, load the, the code. Uh, we specify what kind of uh, syscall we are interested in, in this case, uh, make dear, and we attach um, our function to this, uh, to this hook. So this is, this is the name of the function and, and it's here. That's it. Also, Python allows us to uh, print the, the trace directly from it. So let's do just that. Mm. Also, sudo Python. Um, there we go. Um, and we can make directory C, and we are getting the same the same information from uh, from Python. The code is way easier. Also, uh, since user space site. Uh, <clears throat> is is not uh, impacting performance like this code is uh, as as fast as it can get uh it runs in the kernel so like mm, <clears throat> it 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 operates on the on the on the memory from the kernel and uh, we will, I, I will talk more about maps uh, in the next example but we could communicate with the user space uh, program in this case with python and do whatever we want with with that information so if we are getting any kind of statistics in this case about new directories we could just uh, do some python magic in here so it's it uh, some stuff may be way easier in python that it would be in in c um, Okay, so that's it. And let's talk a bit about maps. <clears throat> um, build and mm, so we have uh, some more stuff in here. Mm, first, let's take a look at our custom message. So we will be using a ring buffer uh, with our custom struct, what we are uh, mm, providing from our BPF program to user space site is process ID, mm, name of the command that run uh, our uh, our syscall, and a path name. So it's it's <coughs> uh, we will be using uh, make dear uh, as in previous examples. So that that's why path name. We can build our custom structure, whatever we want. Um, on the, our user space site, what changed is uh, we create a ring buffer and uh, we attach a handler to every uh, new message that's being pulled from that buffer. And in our infinite loop, we pull the ring buffer for messages, and for every me for, for, for every custom message, we get uh, our uh, handler in user space called, and we can do something with that message that was extracted specifically by our, by our BPF program. Um, in this case, we just print it to standard output. Mm. In our BPF program, what changed? Uh, we still have this uh, um, parameters struct, but we also uh, define our map, which is uh, of type of ring buffer and size of 256 um, kilobytes. And um, what's different here, uh, we um, reserve memory in our ring buffer uh, and check if it was Mm, properly reserved in case if our user space uh, uh, application is not being able to process uh, messages fast enough it may fail so in this case we just error out and then we fill that that struct with um, 
um, process ID with name of the command and uh, path name. Then we submit the uh, our message to the ring buffer, and as previously, we print uh, information to our tracing pipe. So let's see how it works. Um, let's open. The script or the tracing pipe that we had uh, at the beginning, and let's make directory D. Uh, so as we can see, still debugging, and we got that process ID uh, in command make dir uh, created directory D. Also, uh, what we don't know if it was successful or not. So if we try to create it again we get exactly the same message. So that's uh, information about syscall being called. And uh, the information about this is at the moment of the syscall. So we do, do not have the result, the, the, the result if, it, the, if this directory was created or not. Maybe it already existed. Maybe we have um, insufficient privileges to create that directory. Uh, it's just uh, the information about um, uh, syscall being called. Also, we have uh, a comment here, uh, comment name uh, that, that that called this uh, make directory syscall. In our case, it, most cases it will be make dir, but uh, there might be some uh, system process in the background that is creating directory for logs or for something like systemd. So uh, it is possible to get an entry for um, uh, in this program with uh, process ID one and command system D and some path that it's being run in the background. So uh, using syscall uh, make dir doesn't necessarily mean that uh, make dir was uh, called like the, the, the binary. It might have been something else. Um, okay, so what we can also do is we can use uh, BPF tool uh, which is a uh, tool shipped with the kernel that allows us to see loaded VPF programs, uh, maps in use, and lots of useful information, especially for debugging. And we can do BPF um, map show. And what we can see that we have the ring buffer named RB. Uh, and information about maximum uh, entries and how much memory is being used right now. In our case, it will uh, almost always be zero because there is very rarely any, any syscall called and it's being processed immediately. Mm. Yes, so that would be it. And let's go to an example mm, with some network processing. Um, okay. Network. So what we have here is um, um, is slightly different approach. So what we are doing, uh, we are uh, attaching to a, um, to a, a incoming packet on a network card, network um, network interface. And it's done in a slightly different way. So we need to specify uh, which interface we are using. Basically, this interface can be obtained from IP command, for example. So in here, it's inter inter interface two. It's, um, I'm connected to a simple virtual machine. So um, there is only two interfaces and interface two is our main um, uh, main internet connection. So we want internet interface two, and we want to attach to egress, which is outgoing traffic. Uh, there is uh, a different way to attach to a hook, mm, basically because uh, we can uh, attach the same, um, we can attach the same handler to multiple interfaces, for example. So in here, we just specify a classifier, network classifier. 
and uh, details are in the, um, in the user space program. There is one other difference. Uh, we need to unload and uh, to uh, destroy the hook and detach our BPF program from the kernel uh, on exit. So with classifier um, hooks, it is possible to exit user space uh, application and still keep the BPF program running in the kernel. Uh, so the change here is just we have a handler for um, interrupt and uh, and sick term uh, that uh, quits our um, infinite loop and detaches uh, our program and destroys the hook. Um, okay, the program itself. So uh, one thing is that uh, we need to have an information what to return from our um, a packet classifier, and those uh, those those uh, defines are copied directly from from this uh, Linux header. We cannot directly include it uh, in our BPF program as it has some uh, features that are not allowed to be used in BPF program. I'm not exactly sure what's the proper procedure here, uh, so I just copied it. Um, but for our uh, case, we are just interested in uh, um, in OK code, which just lets packets go through and uh, drop code. Um, OK, so this is our handler. Uh, what we get as a parameter is a socket buffer. Uh, I said before about uh, how BPF is uh, faster than it's user space equivalent. So if we load that uh, program into the kernel, uh, we operate directly on the memory from the kernel. So in case if we were to open a socket in user space, we would get a copy of that packet. In here, it's um, memory from the kernel that's being shared with the kernel and not a copy. Uh, what we are interested uh, in the socket buffer is what's the end of the data. Mm, it's the pointer, uh, like we could get the beginning and the size, uh, the way how it's uh, uh, with socket buffers, we get the end of the, of the socket buffer. So we can either calculate the length or just check if uh, the memory we are trying to access is um, is, is, is accessible, is, is uh, assigned to, to us. Um, and we get the Ethernet header um, address. So this uh, is very important part. Uh, so another thing I said about BPF is security. Um, uh, so this is something you would do in your every C code. Uh, everyone would have to, uh, to, to check before uh, accessing uh, memory at some point. Uh, we need to make sure that this memory is available. So we, need to, uh, we could split that into multiple sections and before every access to check for it. Uh, in here at the very beginning, I'm checking if uh, from uh, in, in, if in our uh, Ethernet packets, we get uh, the header, um, uh, IP header and UDP header. Uh, because that's what interests uh, us in, in, in our case. And uh, as I said, that's something you would do in every C program, but in case of a BPF, we, if we comment that out and we can, we can build it and we can run our user space program, but during the mm, load, we get uh, permission denied, and we get an information that we are trying to ac access uh, memory, and we didn't check if it's safe to do so. So this happened during load of the program uh, to the kernel. Kernel knows that this is unsafe approach and wouldn't allow that to run. So if it was user space application, we could at some point get a sec fault in case if uh, this socket buffer wasn't long enough for us to check some parts of it. Uh, with BPF, 
we cannot even load that program because kernel provides us security that this program is safe. That's uh, why we have all that limitations. Uh, we cannot do everything that regular C program would do, but also uh, we get, uh, thanks to that, we get the security. Uh, we know that we didn't check the memory and we cannot run that. So it, it wasn't even run. It's, uh, it was, uh, error was thrown during the load to the kernel. Uh, if we re-enable that part, build it and run it, it's, uh, it's being loaded to the kernel properly. So let's go quickly uh, what we do in this, in this uh, program. So it's a very simple DNS uh, blocker. We check if um, we have uh, IPv4 header. If not, we just uh, let the packet go through. Then we check uh, if it's uh, UDP. If so, uh, we get the port and check if port is uh, 53. If so, uh, we just drop it. Um, so we have a num magic number here, 53. Uh, it's DNS, obviously, but we could, in theory, this program could block multiple ports. So we could either have a, a list here or we could have a map uh, provided by our user space site with list of ports to block. And we could edit this uh, map uh, in real time from our user space application. And this would be even more advanced firewall because it could block multiple ports and uh, change the list of, uh, of uh, blocked ports uh, on runtime. We could also have a white list, uh, black list, uh, several uh, different ones for, for UDP and TCP. Plenty of options. Uh, I went with magic number here because uh, we already went through the um, ring buffer example. Uh, there are other maps available. I didn't want to make it uh, too difficult for no reason. There are several ways to, to provide that information about the port from the, from the um, user space site. And uh, this is written in C, so maybe uh, HTTP server with some options to configure the, the port uh, uh, would be too much, but we can do whatever we want here. Like this is the regular C code running in user space. Uh, we can provide any, um, any interface to uh, feed our BPF program with list of ports or whatever uh, is happening here. So let's make sure it runs. So let's shut it down for now. Let's ping kodi9.com. The ping is, uh, is going through. Um, but if we run our program, ping uh, is not going through. Uh, DNS is blocked. It will error out uh, after a while. I don't know, it's a five seconds timeout probably in, in the, the ping that it cannot resolve uh, codeline.com. If we block the, uh, stop the program, okay, not in, uh, in time, but let's do it again. It works, um, block it, doesn't work, we can detach it and it should go through. Probably pink uh, retries after a second or something, so that's why the delay. Um, okay, the other thing is that uh, I have prepared uh, a little function here to show info about packets that are going, uh, going through. Um, so let's un uncomment this. <coughs> Okay, so we want to get trace here. So same uh, same story as it was with um, execve. Mm, Visual Studio Code is doing a lot in the background. So let's just quickly um, get rid of that traffic. I think IP changed. Uh, this is destination address. The format is not really easy on the eyes, but 
Uh, that's just hex representation. And okay, way less right now. There is still some traffic in the background, but not as much. And we can do ping again. And here we have uh, that ping. Mm, first, uh, there was UDP packet for the DNS and then ICMP with a destination address. So our info extraction, basically based on the protocol, we uh, check destination address and the port and print it out to the, to the, for the debug. So there is a way to monitor traffic. Like uh, we could use in here some kind of uh, map to communicate to the in uh, user space uh, something about uh, outgoing traffic. We could uh, set up some counters, uh, do some statistics, uh, maybe try to find some uh, traffic that's uh, considered dangerous, whatever we want. And it's way faster than any, any user space application because we are running inside the kernel and we can easily implement some kind of uh, logic, our own logic into the kernel itself. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.